All right. Well, now is time for our uh, main billing for this this evening. So let me bring up my notes here. I shouldn't need any notes because I've known Gail for a uh, very long time. It's uh, probably coming on sort of eight or nine or possibly even 10 years. Um, so our topic tonight is uh, the um, a simple way to that anyone can create a book in 90 days or less. So that really appeals to me uh, in that it's a uh, you know, reasonably short time frame. It, it, it doesn't feel unrealistic. It feels reasonably realistic and uh, there's a good time frame to get something done. So the presenter for tonight is uh, Gail Tagaro and uh, she is a uh, book writing uh, coach. She's an accredited editor. Uh, she's got a degree in news journalism and a master of arts in linguistics. So she knows how to write. Um, and she knows how to sort of, uh, sort of fix up other people's writing. So she's got a background in journalism, journalism corporate and business analyst and document management. Uh, she's edited books of all genres and uh, is, um, uh, is uh, helping people with their writing as a uh, coach. She's an author herself. Uh, she's written a historical novel, which uh, I have seen. I haven't read it yet, but um, I, I've seen it. It sits out uh, on the desk every um Every Tuesday, uh, Thursday, yeah, Thursday fortnight. Um, uh, so as she's got a self-help non-fiction book on writing techniques, uh, and she's written a ton of corporate uh, procedures and IT documentation uh, manuals. Um, she's been working with uh, other writers since uh, the early 2000s. Uh, so we, we could say safely that that's the uh, turn of the century. Um, <laughs> And um, she's been helping them with our book coaching, professional editing, manuscripts, appraisals, and publishing know-how. So a book is um, probably the best business card you can have because it demonstrates your credibility in your industry. Uh, and you'll find that many people in your industry don't have a book. So if you do have a book, then uh, you're going to stand out head, head and shoulders above others, even before anyone reads it. Just the fact you've got a book, uh, you're seen as an expert. Um, maybe the uh, gateway to uh, programs that you're planning to run and or perhaps you have want to leave a legacy of the work you've done uh, or undertaken in your field for your colleagues or even your family. So I'd like you to put your hands together to welcome uh, today, Gail Tagaro. Thank you, Nick. I'm just going to bring up my notes. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on here, Nick. Um, and thank you, everyone, for coming along. Um, I see that there's a lot of, of interest and um, some very relevant things that people have come along for. So Glenn's looking at organizing content. Um, Selena's probably looking at time management and, and sort of the discipline around writing. Um, Colin's looking at all of that stuff that happens after a writing a book and uh, Stephen's wanting to write books and, and wanting to leave a legacy so <clears throat> a, a lot of this we, we do cover um, today and I see that the idea of writing a book in 12 weeks is, is quite popular um, which is why I kind of came up with that time frame. So um, just, just very briefly, I know that Nick's given an introduction, but I'll, um, I'll just um, add a little bit to that. So, oh, and before I do, I was going to say, I, I find it a bit hard to, or I won't be kind of looking in the chat, but if there's any questions that anyone wants to ask as I'm going through, that's fine with me, or we, or we can do it at the end, um, I don't mind. So I run a 12 week book coaching program called Get Your Book to the Finish Line <clears throat> because so many people start a book and, and then don't finish it. Um, as Nick said, I've been working with writers for around 20 years, written books myself. Um, and um, prior to this, I ran a technical writing consultancy in New Zealand for 15 years. And I was working for companies like Telecom and Vodafone and Air New Zealand, being the conduit between IT nerds <laughs> and end users. So translating tech speak into plain English. 
So in this presentation tonight, while in the real world, I coach people on how to write all types of books, I'm focusing tonight on writing a nonfiction book and especially nonfiction for business. A lot of the same principles apply, but yeah, that, that's how, because it's a business group, I thought that was more relevant. So some of the things that we'll be covering tonight is the reasons that someone might want to write a nonfiction book for business, roadblocks you'll most likely encounter as a new author and some solutions to these, things to consider before starting to write a book, then how to get started on writing a book, what comes next, so what to do after your book is written, and some of the benefits of working with a book writing coach. So first of all, some of the reasons that people may have for writing a non-fiction book you may want to leverage your expertise in your particular field by writing a book, like Nick said, using your book as your business card. Um, a book uh, may be a way to demonstrate credibility in your industry. A book may be the gateway to programs you're planning to run or for speaking events or for business expos, we have one coming up on Thursday here on the Gold Coast, or for client meetings. So you may want to use your book as a giveaway to clients, or you may want to, to sell your book online. Um, and some people, as we, we've heard, want to leave a legacy of the work that they've undertaken in their field for their colleagues, or sometimes for their family. So an example of this, I've recently worked with a couple of professional ladies who run a clinic for women with metastatic breast cancer. Uh, these ladies run a unique service with a unique methodology they've developed. And they've been running the group for over 20 years now they've got to the point where they're looking to retire over the next few years. And they don't want all their work and their experience to be lost once they retire. So they've written a book to capture all of that, documenting the history of the service, their methodology, and the benefits to the many women who've participated in the service and those women's uh, families. Whatever your reason for wanting to write a book, over the years, you'll have accumulated a huge amount of knowledge in your area. So you'll have a unique set of experiences, a unique take on your particular field. And this is potentially of huge value to others and so very worthwhile writing down. Just a, a brief story about a recent client. Um, he has around 30 years experience in sales and his book, you might think sales, well, you know, how many books are there on sales? <clears throat> which of course is right. But his book has a unique take on sales. It comes from a completely different perspective from lots of other books on the same general topic. And he's now created a whole line, online program around his subject with his book being his flagship product. He launched his book around six months before launching his program. And by doing that, he created interest and engagement in his book. And then it was easier to generate interest and engagement in his follow, follow on program because he'd already created his audience. And we will talk tonight about, about target audience for a book. So 
now let's have a look at some of the factors that you'd want to think about if you're keen to write a book. Um, and some of the roadblocks that you'll probably encounter as a new author. Some of the most common of these are, I don't have time, um, not carrying through on the writing. So you've set a schedule, but you haven't followed through. Not knowing where to start, not knowing what topic to write about or the exact topic, pinpointing that. And a lot of writers don't even give a thought to their target audience. So just touching very briefly on the solutions to those, and we'll go into them in more depth, in terms of not having time to write and not carrying through on writing, well, the solution to that is, is time management and creating a schedule for writing. Not knowing where to start, um, the way to overcome that is to have a structure and a, a book template. Not knowing what topic to write about, the best way there is brainstorming perhaps with colleagues uh, and also researching the market to see what's out there and what isn't out there. About the target audience, we'll go into that now. So your target audience is your readership. They are the people who are going to buy and read your book. So it's important, even before you begin writing, to have clear in your mind who your audience is. Uh, by targeting your book at your ideal readers, you're much more likely, first of all, to grab their attention with your book and make them want to buy it. And then after that, maintain their attention and interest in the book because clearly they're the right people for your book. It's important to really know who your audience is, not just imagine who they are. So how would you do that? Let's use the same example of writing a non-fiction book about sales. And let's say you want to reach people in business between the ages of 25 and 65, say. What you can do is think of five people you know reasonably well who fit this demographic. Uh, it's, a, it's important to choose those five wisely, uh, not just, you know, family or friends, but, you know, colleagues, people that you know in business. And ask yourself before you approach them, do these people commonly read a lot of book about, books about sales? Do you know the last sales book they read? And if you told them about your book idea, do you think they would want to read it? If the answers that you come up with are no, then consider a different angle for your book. On the other hand, if you come up trumps with your hypothetical questions, then it's a good idea to go ahead and ask those people for their opinion. The advantage of doing this is that, or this approach, is that you're running your idea past a realistic target audience. Also, if you plan to submit your finished manuscript to publishers and agents, it's extremely important to have your readership clear when you approach them. You need to be prepared to answer in a very specific way, who do you see as your target audience? And I'm not just saying it has universal appeal or anyone who wants to find out more about sales or anyone who works in sales because that just isn't going to cut the mustard with a publisher or agent. And a question. Sure. Gail, this just completely goes to the total opposite to what I was thinking. 
I mean, I always, I mean, I understand from this a sales book, I suppose you've got a target market. But I thought those who wrote books um, wrote books the way they wanted to and it came from them, whereas this sounds like it's very much not coming from the author. It's coming, it's, it's, it's a product that you're actually writing to sell. That's it. So uh, I, is, is, do, are all books like that or is this just one avenue or one product that you're talking about because yeah this is probably you know quite specifically to business you know quite specific to business books yeah um I think it's a combination you know say you're writing a, a novel book or or any type of book I guess you you start off writing the book that you want to write because obviously you know if you just if you're just thinking about making money that never works you know no. you've got to you've got to really um, want to write the book you've got to be you know to to have the knowledge to write the book so so yes I mean you're going to come up with the idea um, but it's it's still a good idea to sort of think about who your audience it is always a good idea to think about who your audience is right. but yes, in terms of of you know a book for a business audience well you're going to yeah. be much more sort of thinking about is it is it actually going yeah. to be well received yeah. yeah that I that I understand but I just thought for what I wanted to do my yeah. audience is a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars really <laughs> yeah 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 does yeah. that answer that okay Donna it, yeah yeah it does so is there, there is more than one way it's just you're focusing on the the business side on the sales. business yep. side today yes okay. yes that's right yeah and non-fiction mm. yeah non-fiction non business yeah okay okay um so we just covered about uh if you were going to approach a publisher or agent but if you plan to self-publish you need to know your target audience too, to ensure that you have a ready market for your book. Um, so just to recap a moment on target audience, before you start writing, have your target audience clear in your mind. Think of five people you know who read and enjoy the genre or topic you're planning to write about. Ask yourself, have these five people recently read a book on this topic? If so, why did they choose to read it? And would they want to re read your proposed book? Then ask these people for their feedback on your book idea. Be prepared to answer in a very specific way the question, who do you see as your target audience? Um, and it's obviously easier to do the target audience test before you begin writing. But if you've started or even finished writing a business book, you can become aware of your audience retrospectively before publishing it and then make any necessary adjustments to the writing. Other factors to take into account when you're thinking of writing a book are, do you have enough material for a book? So with a non-fiction business book, you'd be looking to churn out around 25,000 to 45 to 40,000 words. And I'll go into more detail on that soon. Uh, another factor is what, we're, and we've covered this to an extent, what have you got to say that's different from other books on the topic? How will your book appeal to your readers? So what will they get out of it that's new and different? <clears throat> In other words, what value are you bringing to them? So now it's time to get into the nitty gritty of writing your book. First and foremost, we're going to talk about having a schedule and practicing effective time management. <clears throat> So you need to put a realistic schedule in place that suits your lifestyle. You need to think about uh, what part of the day you're most focused. Uh, would it be early morning, before the family's up, or after dinner? So thinking about, you know, some people are morning people, some people are night people. So 
when when are you going to be most focused to work on your writing and then at your most focused times realistically think about how many hours a week you can dedicate to writing so as a guide in my 12 week coaching program i'm recommending around 4 hours a week writing time as a minimum over the 12 week period so this amount of time would uh, would achieve around 2500 words a week or 625 words each time you sit down for a writing session so at the end of 12 weeks you'd end up with a 30,000 word book which would be around 184 pages and that's a pretty decent size for a business book and I think quite doable looking at you know around four hours a week obviously if you can do more that's fine but you know it it works within that time frame and then um, regarding your schedule which days of the week would you dedicate to writing what works best for you um, certain weekdays or or are weekends better and keep in mind that it's only 12 weeks out of your life that we're talking about spending on getting that first draft of your book written. Once you've set your schedule up, then the next thing to do is to actually put that or schedule that writing time in your calendar in order to make it work. So I use Google Calendar and I color code all my activities. Um, you could use Google Calendar or another, or another type of electronic ca um, calendar and um, color code your writing time as, for example, green or whatever you, you fancy. Uh, obviously, if you prefer, you can use a standard diary too, whatever works for you. Uh, having scheduled in your time the next thing to do is to map out your book structure so this is your table of contents that list of contents that's at the beginning of every book it's a list of the main or the top level topics that you're including in your book after you've listed the main topics that top level those top level topics then you would drill down to the next level below that. For the purposes of this initial exercise of getting your book structure mapped out, I think one to two levels is enough because as you start writing, you're automatically going to, um, to go, you may automatically go to further levels down, but for this um, first exercise, that's going to give, give you a really good start. Just have a drink of water, my throat's a bit tickly. <laughs> um, talking about the book title, um, while the book title is really important and you know for marketing it's it's you know great to have a very catchy title and so on, it's more important when you're writing your book to have your topic clear. So um, you, may, you may have a title and, and great um, if you do, but if you don't, you'll find that as you're writing, it actually becomes easier to come up with the title. And sometimes you're not even, you can't even think of a title until you've finished writing. Um, so that's fine if, that, if that's the case. With all this set up done, um, you then, you, if you use a, te a template created in Microsoft Word for your book, it's so much easier to start with that than to have a blank page or a blank screen in front of you. I'm just going to briefly mention copyright at this, at this point here, because out of 100 writers I work with, say, 90 of those use quotations or material taken from other writers' works 
in their own book. So it's good to have a bit of background on this. Firstly, in Australia, you as the author don't have to register copyright for your book. In Australia, copyright is automatic as soon as you put down in writing your original words. Now, when you're quoting from other writers' works, of course, that's no longer your original words. So you need to be aware that you have to reference and acknowledge their work. Now, this is, you know, particularly important with, um, well, it, I was going to say with nonfiction books, but, you know, I, I've got a references li reference list in my novel as well because I had to do a fair bit of research. And um, I'm going, the way I recommend creating a references list is, um, is the way that I ended up doing it, but I didn't start doing it. So um, you'll be able to learn from my mistake. And that is to create a references list at the back of your book as you're writing. Um, so the, um, the idea is to fully reference each book or publication that you consult. So you'll record the page reference, like it's it's full on. <laughs> you record the page reference, the full title of the publication, the full author name as it appears on the book, the date of publication, the publisher, and right down to the publisher location. So e.g. New York, Auckland, uh, you know, Sydney. It's possible that you may also need to seek permission in writing from the author or their publisher to reproduce the material. It depends how much, well, it's not, it doesn't just depend how much you're quoting because a lot of people think that they only need to reference another work if they're quoting long passages from another book. But in fact, that's not the case. It's, Copyright's trickier than that. Uh, you also have to quote um, what's con if you're quoting what's considered the heart or the essence of the work, and it can be really difficult to to analyze just what that is. So it's better always to be safe rather than sorry and reference regardless. So just as as a, as a sort of an example in business. If you're quoting in your book from another writer who's copyrighted a particular business theory, then you'd need to seek their permission to reproduce this theory in your book. Um, sorry, Gail. What if sure. what if I, what if I've taken a, a quote from a show that I've done, and it's the quote of someone who was on my show? That sh that should be fine. Um, if it, and I suppose, Debbie, it depends if you've sought permission to use, you know, like... Um, well, the, they know that I use... What's from... Sorry, go they, on. If, if, you've, if they know and, you know, part of, part of their agreement is that you can use the material that they mention, then, then that, that shouldn't be a problem. But I'm using it on my show anyway, so it's live on YouTube anyway. Um, <clears throat> so I run a podcast and the implication is is not that you have permission unless you've asked for permission yeah. so they can they can appear on they can appear on your show <clears throat> but unless you've explicitly asked them for permission to use that material you can't use it <clears throat> okay thank you okay no that thanks Stephen um, so now I'm going to go into what Colin was uh, was was talking about, although not quite into all of the promotion and distribution and so on for for the book because because that's actually a different area and it involves different experts. But um, what comes next after you've finished writing the first draft of your book? Um, and are you left alone to ponder the next steps? As a new author, you'll very likely find the book and publishing world a bit of a mystery 
and a labyrinth to negotiate. When you're part of a coaching program, you have the support available to advise you on the next steps and, and to guide you through those steps. Now, obviously, once you've written the first draft of your book, a vital step is to have it professionally edited. Sorry, Nick, not write, publish, edit, but write, edit, publish. <laughs> um, so, and first, it may need to be checked. So if, you, if you've just written the book yourself, um, you'd probably want to run it by a professional to check first that it's actually ready for editing or whether it needs more work first. Um, with, with a coaching program, it may contain an up, upgrade option whereby the coach does ongoing reviews of your book as you're writing it. But for your book to be taken seriously in the marketplace, it's vital that it be professionally edited. And I may be speaking to the converted here. You may all, all realise the importance of editing, but um, I just thought in case you doubt it, let's consider another couple of professions. Um, who would be more qualified to inspect a house you're going to buy? You or your family or a building and pest expert? <laughs> and is your accountant better qualified to advise you on tax matters than you yourself? So it stands to reason that your book is going to be more polished when it's reviewed by a professional book editor than it would be if you didn't have it reviewed at all or it was reviewed by an unqualified, however well-meaning, family member or friend. Now, just a little example here. A few years ago, I was approached by a gentleman who'd self-published his memoirs about his life on his farm and he'd put the book up on Amazon. When he came to me, he had the book on sale for a few months. And he said his wife had advised him to have it edited before he put it up for sale because there were some dreadful errors in it. But he'd plowed on and uploaded it anyway. So what happened? Well, he kept receiving negative reviews because of all the mistakes that readers found. And of course, unfortunately, online reviews are extremely public and visible. And reviewers are often merciless. <laughs> Once I'd edited his story and he'd published the new version on Amazon, the reviews quickly changed, but sadly, there was no way he could obliterate all those negative historical reviews. On the other side of the coin, a client who came to me to edit all five of his books, he wrote a whole series, re received a five-star review on Reader's Favourite Book Review, which he sent to me. And the reviewer said, it is clear this book has been professionally edited. Alas, not something you can take for granted these days, as I didn't spot one error. So. Editing is very uh, a very important part of your book process. A decision, a decision you'll be making too is whether you'll seek traditional public publishing or self-publishing. That's sort of the million dollar question after you've written your book. Just a little reality check here. Depending on your topic, on how popular your topic currently is in the marketplace and on a whole lot of factors that only publishers and literary agents are generally privy to, there may not actually be much of a choice between publishing traditionally and self-publishing. However, there are quite a few traditional and mainstream publishers in Australia, and I'm thinking here, for example, Penguin Australia or Allen and Unwin, that have they have periods when they accept submissions of unsolicited manuscripts. So you can certainly put your, for, put your 
manuscript forward to publishers or literary agents for consideration at the, at the specific times and following their very specific guidelines. And it's worth a shot. Um, there's no cost involved and it's a good idea to test out whether your manuscript is going to appeal to the publisher or agent. Many writers now though do choose self-publishing <clears throat> either as their first option or after having tried submitting to a publisher and not receiving a response, which is generally the norm. Um, most all publishers have on their on their websites and in their submission guidelines that if you haven't heard back from them within a certain time that they haven't you take it that they haven't accept, accepted your book. So with self-publishing, there are various things that you need to do after editing to prepare your book for publication. This isn't a, an exhaustive list, but quite a few, um, it, it does cover many of the things that you need to do. And they include getting an ISBN, for your book, that's an international search code um, to so that your book can be potentially searched anywhere in the world. Purchasing a barcode for a print book. Registering your book with the national and state libraries, which by the way is a free service, so don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Deciding if you want an ebook as well as or instead of a print book, because there may be financial considerations here with saving on printing costs. And you could quite feasibly decide to initially test the market out with an ebook and then, depending on how it goes, then um, invest in, in printing for, for a hard copy book. Another aspect of self-publishing is having your book cover designed, which of course is very exciting. And when you self-publish, you pretty much have 100% say in, in the cover, um, which is not the case when you publish traditionally. And then getting a graphic designer to do the internal layout of the book because once once the book's edited of course it's a, just a four size and generally double spaced and it's got to be set up to the correct page size um, and layout of of the final book format you can do all of those steps yourself and i'm sure that those of you who've written a book already probably have done so um, some um, editorial professionals offer help with these steps, doing it on your behalf or guiding you through the process um, and referring you to reputable experts in these allied areas. So that's where um, what you said, Colin, about um, promotion, um, that would be a referral to someone like Aldwin, for example. So um, just to finish off, almost, um, I'll just cover some of the benefits of working with a writing coach to write your book. Of course, you can go it alone and write your book yourself. Many people do, and I'm sure there's people here today who've done that. How it could be easier with a coach, however, let's imagine this scenario. You've decided to write your book. Your topic has a unique point of difference. You've done your target audience research. You have plenty of material for a 20 to 40,000 word nonfiction book. You've enthusiastically sat down in front of your laptop to start writing, your fingers poised above the keyboard. What now? You have no idea where to start and you realize you've been here 20 times before, sitting before a blank screen, frustrated, frustrated and unable to start writing. Now, obviously that's not the case for everybody because we've already heard at the beginning that there's several people who've written books. 
and who don't have that problem. And Colin said, it, it, writing's the easy part. Well, it's great. It isn't the easy part for everybody. Um, and, and that's kind of where, where a book coach can help. So by working with a coach, you will get resources, support and guidance, and you'll have accountability. With resources, some examples of those, you'll be guided through a book structuring process. You'll be given a book template so that you don't have a blank page or screen to start off with. And you'll start writing your book on day one. So you'll feel that you're making progress right from the start. With the support and guidance, you'll receive uh, both, depending on the coaching program, you'll receive group and or one-on-one -on -one coaching and sometimes group and one-on-one -on -one coaching. So my program does include both. You'll have membership of a private support group where you can post any queries, doubts or frustrations and receive answers and access to resource material, most importantly. Um, when you're writing a book, you know, everybody who writes a book has got different needs. And um, so a, a private group, like a private Facebook group is a great place to, to publish that, those resources. You'll receive email support and you'll have touch points all along the way. So you won't be going it alone and you won't be wondering if your writing is getting across your ideas effectively or not. And most importantly, you'll have accountability. So when your discipline wavers or you experience writer's block, or something changes. So maybe your schedule has to change or your circumstances change. And you begin to struggle to continue with writing the book, having a coach to be accountable to is often the difference being between success and failure. So success being writing and, and finishing your book and failure never getting your book off the ground or never finishing it. There's, there are some interesting statistics around, um, and depending on which ones you read, uh, a low, there's, there is actually a low percentage of people who actually finish writing and publishing a book, um, as opposed to those who start writing a book. So just to recap, I'll, I'm going to give you four tips to take away if you're planning on writing a book. The first one, know your topic inside out. We've, we mentioned this before in Donna's question. So you need to write a book, you need to be an expert in your topic and you need to be prepared to research any areas that you're not an expert in. Number two, research and test your target audience before you start writing a business book. Number three, plan and structure your book before you start writing and hopefully with, with a template. <coughs> and number four, schedule your writing time realistically into your lifestyle. And just at about the appropriate time, my voice is starting to give out. So any questions? <laughs> Thank you for listening, everyone. Um, <clears throat> is it okay, Gail, if I ask of a question? Course. Yeah, thank you very much. That was great. Um, really, really um, some very useful tips there. Um, I have a question in terms of the magnitude. So sometimes, you know, writing... 16,000 million pages or words is, is psychologically, you go, mm, I don't want to do that. Is it possible to break it up into bite-sized pieces and write smaller, like I, th I think Google has like a 15 minute read, a 30 minute read, uh, those sorts of, th or Amazon, I beg your pardon. No. So for those of us that are, that, have, that are traumatized by the concept, 
Um, uh, would you have has that been a success, or have you seen success where where people have written smaller books in the chapter headings, if you like, and then combine those together in a in a book? Does that make sense? Um, so you mean that the, Stephen that they've written the chapters separately and published them already, or? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, writing, thinking through the content of the book and the chapters mm -hmm. and then breaking those down into small bite-sized pieces, yes. publishing publishing those and then bringing them all together into one book, sure. maybe not in exactly the same form. Yeah, sure. I mean, if, there, if, if each chapter is a standalone topic, um, it would be quite feasible to do it that way, um, and it might be a good idea to publish those as ebooks, um, because obviously, you know, the logistics. Uh, I mean, there is a limit. There is a, a minimum size that a, a print book will, will need to be. So um, you could publish them as ebooks, um, and then bring combine them all together as one book. Yes, yeah, sure, mm. that's quite feasible. Thanks. And, and as you say, it's you know it's um, it, it it takes away that psychological pressure of having to write a, a full length book. Mm. Hello, Gail. Can I ask a couple of questions, please? Uh, of course, Colin. One of the things I was wondering about is uh, whether illustrations or photographs in your book is a positive or a negative. I guess it depends on the type of book, Colin. So <clears throat> you you were talking about your memoirs, weren't you? Yeah. Well, um, I've got I've got this book here that I've already written, uh, <laughs> and it's got and I put graphics in here just to sort of emphasise certain things there. Yeah. But with the memoirs, it's between the age of fifteen and thirty in a precise place, which is just outside Edinburgh. So. I was wondering whether graphics of that time and that era would yes. add a little bit extra dimension I, to the book. I totally think so. Yes, 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 definitely. Mm. I mean, mm. I, th I think with any any aspect of a book or any content, if it's relevant to to the content, then it's going to enhance the content. If it's not relevant to the content, well, it's just you know like an unnecessary extra. But in in that kind, yes, definitely it would it would enhance the book. You'd and the other, to... yeah, the other question I had is people keep telling me that I should make it an audio book. Some oh, people right. think that I've got an accent. I don't hear an accent, but some people think <laughs> I've got an accent, and it well, might lend something to the book. I don't know. <laughs> well, yes, there's a lot of people. It's an it's really interesting because there's a lot of people now. Um, a lot of my clients have written a book and published a book, and then done an audio book it seems I'm a little bit mystified um, but it, it does seem to be very popular um, yes it would like you do you do sorry Colin you do have an accent but then so do I and so does everyone I mean you just happen to have an accent that isn't heard here every day um, but I mean it's quite uh, it would be quite fine for you to to um, dictate the book yourself or somebody else can, you know, you can have professionals do it. But I, the people that I've worked with, they've, they've um, read out their own books and, you know, they work with a professional and that professional audio book person um, gives them all of the cues and, and, and training they need to do that. So quite feasible. <laughs> Can I just pop in? Of course. Hi, I'm Susan. Hi, I'm also a book coach. I'm not coming on your turf, but That's all right. I just thought I'd tell uh, Colin something. Uh, the research, uh, people like to hear audio books, fiction books. They kind of binge on fiction books the way they binge on Netflix. Uh, audience for business books is not so big for, aud for audio. So um, that's something to think about if you... Uh, if you want to invest in an audiobook for business or not. Yeah, but if you're cool. writing memoir and you're basically, I saw your comments that, you know, maybe you have a small audience. 
you could do a podcast, turn your book into a podcast and uh, you know, use that as a giveaway for people to buy your print book. And it's quite easy to do a podcast using something like Amazon Polly, uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, voices are really good. If you notice, I have an accent. So, uh, so I didn't do my books. Uh, I didn't do it myself. Also takes too much time. Uh, so uh, you can use something like Amazon Polly if you like, and uh, you know, do chapters. That was also what Stephen was saying that, you know, a big book may be too much of overwhelm, but what you could do is you could, you could do a chapter at a time and you could, pod, you could, you know, record it as your own podcast. So basically the idea of what we're talking about is, a Gail, you know, Gail knows her clients and so do I. One of the biggest things which stops really intelligent, clever people who are business owners is the overwhelm thinking that the book is something huge. It's not more huge. It's just another product. <laughs> so, you know, the easier you can make it for yourself, be kind to yourself. And there's lots of there's lots of technology today which you can use. And that's the whole point of using technology is to make it easier for ourselves. So that's me. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. No, that's great. Very good point. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can I uh, just ask a question too? Uh, here, Ron. Here. Um, yeah, sure. I'm. I'm not an author. I like writing. I've taken it up uh, just recently in my life. Um, but when I think about a book, you know, one of the things that overwhelms me is organisation of content. You, know, yeah. you have all these things in your mind. So do you have like a system of getting organized? Yes, I so when I when I talk with someone who's who's going, you know, who wants to write a book, that's one of that's basically what we do in the very first session is to organize the content into a in a logical way, into logical um, parts. So it's 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 interesting because it's actually easier for someone like me to come in objectively and see your content and be able to sort of switch it all around or put it put it all in the place that makes most sense. Whereas uh, when it's when it's yourself, you 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 do you kind of well it, you you do t tend to get overwhelmed sometimes with all of that. And also, if you've been working with with um, your writing for a while, you get so close to it that you can no longer be objective. So, so yes, the content is um, is a big part, or organising the content is a big part of working with with someone on their book. So, your suggestion would be to um, uh, sort of get some uh, content, rough, rough, roughly outlined content and then um, present it to, uh, to you uh, to actually get a template formula together and then go and write. Yeah, yes, yes, that would, that would, um, that would work really well, yeah. Mm. Okay. Can, can I jump in again, please? Um, I just had a thought then um, when Ron was talking, um, I, I know that when I have a conversation with somebody and ask them what they do, and then they start to explain what and and I'm, I'm asking them to tell me what it is that they do um if you recorded that um and then that basically you know i'll use, harshly use the word verbal diarrhea but you just allow it to flow um and then you can drop it into otter dot you know otter dot ai i think it is or one of those transcription things and then that might be a quick and easy or dirty way to get your ideas down on paper and then you can start to because then you're not having to write yes exactly. Right? Uh, and, and then you can maybe start to break them up into logical sequences because we i don't speak logically normally <laughs> I'm, I'm bouncing around all over the place so that might be a what do you think of that idea I, th I think that's a really great idea. Um, also, I have a couple of people that I'm working with and they're using, they're just using something really, really simple and that is Microsoft Word's dictation tool. So they're just reading, reading their, um, rather than typing and then 
you do have to go back and um, fix it up because it sometimes picks up funny things. But I mean, basically you can say comma and full stop and exclamation mark and, you know, and it does get it, as you say, um, you know, verbal diarrhea, it gets it down a lot faster than what your fingers can type. So yes, Dota, uh, Otter, dot ai would be a great way to, a great tool to use as well for people who don't want to who who sort of aren't touch typists if Could I I ask a question now it's victoria from wellington new zealand oh, and i right. want to know that um do we have to register cop copyright in new zealand Ooh, victoria that's a good question i'm not sure because i've um i've worked here with writers not in New Zealand. Oh, okay. um, but I can find out for you. Oh, don't worry. I, I, go, I Googled it when you asked it the first time and it's no, you don't need to do it. It's the same rules. Okay. So basically all these countries which have come from the British Empire, India, Australia, UK, they have the same rules that you don't need to register copyright if you have written it yourself the first time. Yeah. So uh, it's only in the US where it's a bit different. Yes, it's but uh, yeah, but New Zealand. I just googled it, and I think even uh, Nick had googled it and put the link up. If you if you scroll through the chat, you'll find the link, Victoria. I did get the link. Thank you very much. Oh, that's Barbara. great. Just, Thanks, Susan. Um, and I had another question too, and I've forgotten what that. Was. Oh, uh, how, how do you actually, if you've got to ask permission of another author, would you go through the publisher? Uh, it depends. It depends, sort of what how much you you're quoting you know like if it's just um a little bit here and there a few words here and there it's going to be enough to acknowledge them in the references but if you're using what is considered the heart or the essence or you know a theory that they've come up with you know that kind of thing then you would need to to contact so it's, it can be actually quite hard to get in touch with, with them. So your first port of call would be to try and contact the author. And then if you can't, to get in touch with the publisher. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a quite a complicated area, copyright. <laughs> um, and I always sort of err on the side of caution. Yeah. Um, because yeah, you don't want to, okay. no problem. All right. Well, we are sort of uh, getting towards the uh, bottom of the half hour. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, thanks, Gail, for a um, uh, an excellent presentation. I, I didn't realise there's actually so much to writing a book. I just thought you wrote it and published it and <laughs> you know, edited it after the event. So uh, as you well know, um, but there's just a ton of information in there that uh, really sort of um, I've never really thought of. So uh, thank you for that. Oh, well, hopefully, thank you. hopefully everyone else sort of uh, found some good information in there that uh, uh, does two things. Uh, one, I think, makes it easy to start and to write a book, and know and know where you're going, uh, and um, secondly, uh, you know, know where to go to get this, uh, uh, you know, professional advice, which would be someone like Gail. In fact, it probably would be Gail, wouldn't it? Um, so, so th uh, thank you. I know that I asked Gail to step up a couple of weeks ago when she was in New Zealand. I thought it'd be a great topic uh, for us. Uh, essentially, I thought it'd be a great topic for me because I've got a book in me that uh, I want to have uh, written. And uh, uh, but, I, uh, but I think um, having spoken with so many people, uh, there are a number of us that have a book uh, ready to be written. So I'm looking forward to actually reading some of your uh, books uh, as they come out and are published. So to get in touch with you, Gail, or to find out more, what's the best way for people to do that? Yes, yeah, sure. So um, either uh, I'll put my details in the um, in the chat, um, and sorry, <laughs> always finding it tricky to get back to the Zoom. Here we go. And I, I'm not sure if I've met um, if I've missed any comments because I haven't been able to read them as I've been going through. Um, I think most of them have been asked. I was tracking them through as you as you went there. That's great, thank you. So I've just put my 
email address, which is quite straightforward, gailbookcoach at gmail.com or SMS or call me on my mobile. 0405695534. Um, and of course, and, you're on Facebook and uh, LinkedIn. And, all and I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram and God knows what else. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. And the great thing about your name is that it's easy to Google and you just come up. <laughs> True. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So, and you've got a prize for someone tonight, for us tonight? Oh. I do. I actually have two. And oh, then two. Aldwin's, Aldwin's offering something too. So I'm not sure how to do this, but I'll leave that the logistics to you, shall I, Nick? All right. Well, I think what we might do is let's draw your two prizes uh, first, uh, Gail. And mm -hmm. then uh, we've got our wheel of names. And uh, then uh, is Aldwin here? I think she is. Yes, uh, I am. I'm, I'm right oh, here. There you go. And then, and then we'll draw our old ones one. So do you want to okay. tell us about your prize, um, Gail? Sure. So um, I would say that, you know, be two different people. Um, I, so the, the one is a one hour free strategy call to cover off any questions that people might have about writing or publishing a book or a book you might already be writing, and that's valued at $150. Awesome. Um, All right. Well, let's, let's draw that one, shall let's we? Let's draw that one first. All right. Yep. So anyone here thinking or considering writing a book and a strategy session would be quite helpful? That'd be me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's go over to our Wheel of Names. And all of your names are in there. And remember, you have to be here to win. So if you're not, we uh, draw it again. So let's uh, spin the wheel. Colin Mackey. And there we go. Colin Mackey, you <laughs> are the winner. Okay. Isn't it funny how the people that uh, ask questions are often the winners on this thing? I don't know how this works. It's uh, probably a bit like Facebook doesn't listen in to you before it shows you ads. <laughs> Thank you for that. I will use it. Yeah, very good. Very good. Well, well, I'll need to. I think I've got your contact details, Colin. Yeah. OK, so, we can either catch up for a coffee and a chat and I'll pay for the coffee or we want to do it online, whatever suits you. OK, sure. No worries. We'll, we'll awesome. work that out. Um, and number the, two prize. So the second one is is actually a biggie. Um, that's 40% off my book coaching program, Get Your Book to the Finish Line. So it's 12 weeks. Um, and it's normally for 995 But uh, for... Oh, actually, sorry. This isn't this isn't a personal prize. This is for anyone who wants to sign up tonight. I'm offering a special discount for 24 hours for two nine nine seven um, instead of four nine nine five. So that's forty percent off. Sorry. Uh, so that's so that, that offer is for anyone here tonight. Uh, if they would like to be part of your coaching program and avail of that, you are offering a special deal, which is, um, uh, sorry, what was the uh, the price? 2997. 2997. Actually, that's really good. I know that some uh, book places are charging 20 grand for 20 grand. Uh, mm. doing writing books and things like this. So uh, this is where we're jumping into because I would imagine that uh, you're going to be putting your prices up at some point there. So <laughs> getting in early, it's going to be great. <laughs> Um, so, so for people to get that, how do they do that? Um, so contact me. So um, just look up the in the chat, or I can say it again. Um, so Gail Book Coach at gmail.com or call me on 0405 Awesome. Okay. So if you're keen on, uh, keen on sort of coming along to that, contact Gail and uh, have a chat with her about it. And uh, she will uh, just let, let Gail know that you're on tonight and um, then you'll uh, be able to take advantage of that uh, special price. Excellent. And uh, 
And we've got one more prize because we've got old one here tonight. She's got an event tomorrow called Free, Free PR Secrets. Is that right? Free Publicity Secrets Masterclass. And it's worth $97 a ticket. So I'm happy to do two if you'd like, two tickets ticket giveaways if you can't make tomorrow then you can come to next month's event I'll, i'm doing them once a month at this stage what a perfect compliment to uh, writing a book then to yes. have uh, publicity to get it all out yes uh, absolutely and, and old one is the uh, uh the master at getting sort of uh, great publicity and getting people onto all sorts of things so um well worth thank, it all right well you. let's uh, Let's flick over to the uh, wheel again. So uh, you can either use it this time or next time. You've got two to give away. So let's uh, spin the wheel for the next lucky winner. Who would be, drum roll please, Ian Minns. Are you here, Ian? Yes, you are. So Congratulations. There we go. So he's got applause beside his name. So there's uh, Ian. So maybe, uh, Ian, if you... Um, just uh, drop into chat to uh, Aldrin your email address and uh, phone number or how to, how to get in touch with you. And we will uh, draw one more again. And if you can make tomorrow so I can get you the Zoom link. And that would be Peter. Yay, yes. congratulations. Now, right. now Peter, if Peter's not here, we, we may be able to make, well, let's see. I'm going to put it to you that we make an exception for him because he's been in and out of this uh, webinar tonight because he's got storms in Thailand, which are taking out the internet. So uh, he would love to, uh, to have stuck around for this. And I think he did drop out there for a minute. So everyone good with that? If we uh, give it to uh, Peter because of the storms? Yeah, perfect. Excellent. Thank you. All righty. Well, Let's bring us back into the main screen, into the main room. That is a, uh, a wrap uh, for this evening. So uh, once again, uh, I think this is your first time presenting this tonight, Gar, wasn't it? Uh, he, he, in, in your group? Uh, so sort of on, online like this. Um, you, I know you've done one yeah, at BX I've done, before. A, I've done an interview. I've done an interview online. But yeah, it's prob probably the first proper presentation I've done, yes. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, fantastic job. Really good. Heaps of information. Really appreciate the fact you've come along to uh, give it all to us tonight. So let's give uh, Gail a hand. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. All right. And we have uh, uh, oh, so the replay of this will be up on the YouTube channel uh, tomorrow, be sort of uh, later uh, tomorrow. So if you want to watch it again and uh, fill in the gaps with those little bits uh, that you may have missed or you want to listen to again. The link for YouTube is in the chat now. Uh, just remember, you can save the chat with those three little dots on the bottom right hand side, which will save all those links for you. Tomorrow, we have uh, Office Hours, which is a uh, no agenda, no speaker, coffee chat for anyone that wants to join us. Uh, no doubt there will be uh, this uh, book uh, writing will be part of the topic of conversation and whatever else you uh, bring along uh, as well too. So bring a cup of coffee, cup of tea, whatever you drink in the morning. It's just like a uh, virtual coffee conversation with uh, business owners and uh, entrepreneurs. And uh, we do have some good uh, conversations too. So that's at uh, 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, which I think is 12 o'clock New Zealand. Uh, what's that? Uh, 9.30 if you're in Central Australia and Adelaide and uh, 8 a.m., nice, nice, bright and early if you happen to be in uh, Philippines, Thailand, Singapore, and uh, Western Australia. Uh, and next week, uh, we'll be on again here uh, next week, same time, same place. So uh, thanks very much, for everyone, for uh, participating tonight. Thanks for all the questions. And again, especially thanks to uh, Gail for uh, your time and expertise tonight. Go and have a great evening.